Hi, are you a super nerd that enjoys watching some random guy on the internet talk about code walkthroughs and OpenBSD? Well then you're in luck because that's exactly what's coming up. All right, so what's up paranoid people? First off, let me say that this is part two of automatic OpenBSD in the cloud. So go watch part one if you haven't seen it yet. I mean, you could watch this and get the gist of what's going on, but you probably should watch part one first. Also, I wanted to apologize for not getting this out within the week like I thought I would. Uh, I lost power over the weekend thanks to Hurricane Zeta right before I was going to edit all this together. Thankfully, I am a slight prepper, so I had a little bit of solar backup and whatnot to carry us through. But yeah, that got in the way. And then also, uh, like any good American, I watched and am watching what's going on with the elections. And I'm wondering, you know, what the hell is going on and what the fuck is going to happen? So yeah, apologies for letting all that get in the way, but I'm going to get this out to you right now. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let's do an LS on this Ansible directory and talk about all the files and things you need to know about. So the first file you need to know about is the ansible.cfg file, which is an Ansible configuration file. It tells Ansible a few different things that you may have customized for your installation of Ansible and how you want it to run. We'll also go over the hosts file, the vulture.yaml playbook file, the bootstrap-ansible.yaml playbook file, a couple of the roles in this roles directory, and then there's one more that I have in my home directory. And that one is going to be this vulture.ini file. And that is where Vulture will keep, you'll keep your Vulture API key. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to show you my Vulture API key so that you can go and spin up free Vulture servers on my dime. But I did make a backup that you can see. You've got here um, just default key equals your API key. So literally just grab the API key from your Vulture portal. If you don't know how to do that, just do a Google uh, and it'll, it'll come up with a page and uh, Vulture will tell you how to create an API key and where to grab it from. And once you get it, just stick it in this file. I've got mine in my home directory. There's a couple other places you could put it. Uh, read the docs if you want to put it somewhere else, but otherwise you can just put it in your home file or your home directory. Just like this uh, .vulture.ini, that's what mine is called. I only have the .pub so that I could show you this one. Okay, so let's look at the ansible.cfg file. So less ansible.cfg. So here's what you're gonna to need to know about this is you've got the defaults, and these are the defaults of how I want Ansible to run on my system. So I told it my inventory file is gonna be in home, freeman, git, ansible, hosts. And then uh, that tells Ansible, here are the hosts that I'm going to know about and run against. Next up, you've got the remote user, and I've called my remote user Ansible. And the remote user is the user that Ansible is going to log into that server with to configure it. And the way Ansible works, if you don't know, is it just works over SSH. There are no uh, agents that you need to install on the server, so that's why I really like it. If you've got SSH up and running, you can run Ansible. So this is the remote user that Ansible will SSH into with and then configure your server for you with. And then the private key file for that user, I've got it here in uh, .ssh, and it's called Ansible, and it's an ed25519 key. So yeah, that's all that I have in my ansible.cfg. There are a few other things you can put in yours if you want, but that's all I have. That's all you will really need to, if you want to run the code that, that uh, I've got up on my Git server. Okay, next let's look at the host file. So let's host. Okay, so this is the host file and for Ansible, that just means these are the hosts that Ansible knows about and that you can run against or target for your Ansible playbooks. So the first one you got here is the local host. And that just means the host that Ansible is running on. And the reason I've got mine here is because the, there are a few playbooks where you want to target the local host and you'll see that in a minute. Now the user I've got for local host is my Freeman user on my desktop here and I've got the RSA key of my Freeman user for a localhost connection. So that's how it'll connect if it's connecting to localhost. Next up is going to be uh, a couple of groups and then some hosts in those groups. And this is called an INI format file. So it's got this generic format of like uh, hosts and then these little groups with the brackets around it. That's an INI format. 
So I've got mine like this and I've got a Git group. So any Git servers would go in this group. Right now I've just put the Ansible demo one in there. And then I've got this blog group, any blog servers. So like web servers or whatnot I've got would go in here. I've only got one and it's called ghost. We'll go over that at another point. And then I've got a name servers group. So I've only got the ns1.paranoid.life in here, but I can put both of them in there and manage both of them. So Ansible would know about both of them. And then I've got the Vulture group down here and I've got Ansible demo in the Vulture group. And I put that one in there so that I know and Ansible knows that these are servers that were spun up on Vulture. All right, next up, let's start looking at the playbook files. So the main file that Ansible runs when you run it is going to be a playbook file. So let's take a look at that. It's called vulture.yaml. And this one is super simple. Now this is a YAML file or yet another markup language, I believe is what that stands for. But it's just a markup language or configuration language. And it's uh, very particular about how it's formatted. So you do want to get familiar with that. The Ansible docs are good for that. And there's also Ansible lint that you can run against your playbooks and it'll tell you how you fucked up things. And of course the official documents for uh, YAML can help you out here as well. But what it consists of is these little dashes and spaces. And like I said, it's very particular about its little dashes and spaces. So get familiar with that, but it's really not difficult and it's a lot easier than uh, using a shell script or something like that. Okay, so the first thing you've got here is hosts and it's just targeting local host. And that's what that means is uh, hosts, what hosts do we want to target? You can target either an individual host or a group. So like that Git group or that uh, Vulture group, like the entire Vulture group. But here the target is local host. And like I said, that will happen sometimes. In this case, it's because what we're trying to do is reach out to the Vulture API. And what system is actually doing that? It's going to be your local host. So Ansible is going to call down to your local host and then out to the Vulture API. So that's why you're targeting local host here. Next up, you've got the roles. And I've only got one role here, and it's called Vulture. And roles are a good way to organize your playbooks. It actually is a, a way that Ansible likes to keep all of its code. Most of its code is going to be in the roles directories. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. Okay, so let's take a look at the Vulture role. And I've got it pulled up here. I did a tree, I ran a tree command on the roles Vulture directory. This is gonna be how a roles directory normally looks. This is the generic structure that you're gonna see for roles in Ansible. It's got the readme, it's got the defaults, files, handlers, meta, tasks, templates, tests, and vars directory. And then it's going to have a main.yaml in most of those directories. So how this works is when you run an Ansible playbook, say that vulture.yaml playbook, you saw that it had a role in there. And then in the roles, it's going to find these tasks in here and run the tasks for that role. And the first one it's gonna look for is main.yaml. So let's take a look at that. Got it pulled up here on the left. All right, so on the left here, I've got the main.yaml file. And then you can see that it, what it does is include tasks, create vulture server.yaml, include tasks, delete vulture server.yaml, and then it's got a couple debug messages. So what I've done here is you can have a main.yaml file be a giant list of a ton of tasks, or if you've got tasks that you want to group together, then you can separate them out to a separate file. So that's what I've done here is I've got the create vulture server.yaml uh, file and it has its own tasks and then delete vulture server.yaml has its own tasks. So what will happen is you run Ansible, it calls the role, it finds the main.yaml file uh, tasks and then it says I'm going to include the tasks from create vulture server.yaml and then it's got this when here which is a uh, conditional. So when all these conditions evaluate to true, I'm going to run the tasks from create vulture server.yaml. So I've got over here on the right, the create vulture server.yaml file. So let's look at those tasks there. So what we've got is, are three tasks, create a vulture server, print out the IPv4 address, and then add the vulture server name to the inventory group, vulture inventory group. So what would happen is Ansible, you run the role or you run the uh, playbook, it calls the role, 
which calls the main task file. And then the main task file, as we said over here, will include all these tasks from, from create vulture server.yaml if all of these conditionals are met and evaluate to true. So let's go a little further into the create vulture server.yaml file and look at individual tasks and how they work. So you've got the name of the task, create a vulture server, and then this is a module, right? This is Ansible calls the vulture server module. This module takes inputs, and here are all the inputs that I have it um, taking. So it's got the name that I want to give the label, so the, the, vulture AP, uh, the vulture label is going to be vulture server name. That's actually a variable. This is what variables look like in Ansible. They're going to have these little squiggly lines on the outside. And then the next one's going to be host name, which is the same, vulture server name. Then it's got the OS, and of course that's OpenBSD. Then you've got the plan. The plan here is the 1024 megabyte size server. You can't actually do the smallest one, the 512 megabyte, but I use the 1024 most of the time anyway. So I've got that hard coded as the plan I want to use. Then you've got the SSH key, Vulture SSH key, another variable. Then you've got the region and the state. I want it to be state started. I want the server to be started. And then you've got this register variable or this um, register module, which will take all of the um, return values from this module and then it will stick it in a register, like a memory register. And then you can name it, and I've named mine output. And so all of that output will then be used for the next task. So print out IPv4 address, and it just, this uh, debug module, all I have it doing is printing a message to the screen, which will be output vulture server v4 main IP. So you saw that when Ansible ran the first time, it outputted the v4 IP address for the Ansible demo. So that's just so you can copy and paste that if you want to use it for some reason. So I've got that there. Next task is going to be add the Vulture server name to the inventory group, Vulture inventory group. So that takes the line in file module, which takes a path inventory file. This is a built-in Ansible uh, variable. I didn't make this one up. So that says, wherever my inventory file is, this is the path of the file I want you to put a line in. And then insert it after here, the Vulture inventory group. And then I want you to add this line to that file. So let's look at these variables and let's look at the host file to see how all that works. All right, so less vars main.yaml. So first let's look at the variables. Okay, so let's look at the variables we've got here. We've got vulture server name, and that's an empty string by default. And remember, you passed that variable in on the command line, and that will override this empty string, which is exactly what we want. So we passed this empty string, we passed it ansible-demo. And so ansible will say, okay, I've got this new ansible-demo for vulture server name, that overrides that empty string, and I'm gonna place it in here in name. Uh, for vulture server name and then in host name and the same thing basically goes for these other variables So vulture region uh, is going to be New Jersey over here for region and Then the SSH key VPS test is going to be put in for SSH key and that's the SSH key on vulture the one in the uh, Portal that's the one you upload to the portal so that you can log in over root so that you can log in with the root user uh, the inventory group name, that is Vulture. So you saw we had that inventory group Vulture. So that's the inventory group name. And then you've got this Boolean delete false. So this is a Boolean, meaning it's either true or false. And it's going to be false by default. So we do not want to delete by default. Okay, so we looked at the variables. Now let's look at that host file one more time so we can see what that last task does. All right, so that last task does exactly what you would think it would. It says insert after vulture inventory group, which was vulture, and insert this line, which is the vulture server name, Ansible demo, and then this string, Ansible host, and then that IP address from output that we grabbed. So it inserts it here, and now you've got it in your host file, and you can target it with um, any other Ansible playbooks you want to target it with. 
Okay, let's look at the next one, which is going to be this delete vulture server.yaml file. It works the same way the create one does. So basically the Ansible will look for the main tasks file and it will include all the tasks from the delete vulture server.yaml file when these conditions are met. So let's look at those tasks. Those tasks are delete vulture server and you give it the name and you say, I want it absent. And then you remove all the instances of vulture server name from the inventory file. That's literally it. So that's all the delete vulture server.yaml file does. Okay, so we've looked at the tasks files. Now let's look at the conditionals for those task files. How does that work? So you already know that include tasks will just include the tasks from a separate file, say this create vulture server.yaml file. So how would this one work? Those will only be included when all of these evaluate to true, meaning vulture server name, I've got it over here, this variable is defined when vulture server name is not an empty string, and then when it's also length is greater than zero. So if you passed it a name such as Ansible demo, all of these things will evaluate to true. So checked all those off. Then it will check this one, vulture server name not in groups, uh, vulture inventory group. So if Ansible demo is not already in the vulture group, we can check that one off the list. And since that was the first time we created it, it checked that, that was uh, that evaluated to true. Now this next one, when not delete. So when delete is false, which is the default, as you can see over here on the right. So all of these would evaluate to true on that first run, as long as you passed a name. So then it will create that uh, vulture server for you. And then the delete one is about the same, except that the uh, bool is going to be true. So you pass it delete equals true. I'll show you that at the end. But that would mean that this one did not evaluate to true on create. So it's just gonna skip all those tasks that are in the create uh, vulture server file. It's gonna skip over that. And then it's gonna say, oh, the delete bool is true. So I'm gonna run all the tasks over in this delete vulture server.yaml file. So as long as you passed it a name and you said delete equals true, it will delete. And once again, I'll show you that at the end. And I've also got a little bit of debug output here that just puts some stuff to the screen, some helpful info for you. So uh, if it skipped over those tasks, it will then say debug, please enter a value for vulture server name variable if you didn't enter one. So if it's an empty string, and you didn't enter one on the command line, it'll say, it'll skip over all these tasks and say, hey, you're gonna need to em enter a value for that variable. So that's just a nice thing for you. And then uh, vulture server name already exists in group vulture inventory group. So if it had already existed in that group, then it would say, hey, this already exists, this name already exists in this group. So we're going to skip that and we're not going to create it for you. Okay, so that's literally all you need to create a Vulture server with Ansible. You just need to know this playbook over here that I've got pulled up on the left, and that just calls localhost and calls the Vulture role. You saw how the Vulture role worked. It calls the main task file here, which will either call the create Vulture server or delete Vulture server uh, task files based on what you pass as a variable on the command line. Okay, so that was the first playbook we ran. So we ran a separate playbook, the Bootstrap Ansible playbook. Now that playbook is just going to secure it a little more and do a couple more things. Let's dive into it and see what it does. Bootstrap-Ansible. And so this one also gets past a variable for the host that it's gonna target. So host would be Ansible-Demo. And then it's got this variable inventory group name. You saw what that variable is already. And then it's just got a list of tasks. So this is a playbook that doesn't have um, a separate role for it. It does include a role at the end here, the SSHD role. We'll look at that one. But it just has a list of tasks and then it calls a role. So let's look at the tasks. All it does is add an Ansible user. Uh, and you just say the name, the password, and the group you want it in. Uh, I got rid of the password because I don't want anyone actually using the Ansible user should they get on uh, with that user. And then it generates an SSH key locally if it doesn't exist. And it calls this open SSH key pair module that does that for you. 
delegate it to localhost so that it will put it on your host. And then you've got your uh, Ansible, add your Ansible SSH key. So this is the authorized key module, which just says, I want you to look up this key right here in my home directory or your home dir directory on your Ansible controller. Find that uh, key and then I want you to put it up on the server that we're configuring. That's all that does. And then you set your do as permissions, um, permit no pass wheel, and then you add the host to an additional group in the Ansible inventory file. So you saw me pass git as the extra inventory group uh, because say I want this to be in another inventory group when I bootstrap it, that way I can run another playbook on it. So I want to add it to another group. In this case, I added it to git. I can then target it with a git playbook or a git role, but that's all that does. You saw it's the uh, line in file module and you saw what that did with the last one where it just says inventory file insert after the group name that you passed it and then uh, the line that you want to pass it and then delegate to localhost because we are doing that on the localhost and then it's got some conditionals that i'm sure you can understand and then it calls the sshd role so we'll look at that next all right so i've run the tree command on the sshd role directory and once again you'll see that this is the standard generic Ansible uh, directory structure for a role. You've got your uh, defaults and all your, your directories and then your main.yaml file in those directories. So let's look at the tasks that this role will run. So less roles, sshd, tasks, main.yaml. And it's only got two tasks. So copy over the sshd server config file and that's on my host right here. So I'll show you that real quick. So in files, in this file directory, I've got sshd server config. I'll pull that up for you over here. So this is literally just an sshd server config that you should be familiar with. And it's one that doesn't have a whole lot going on. It's very bare bones. All I wanted it to do was say, uh, permit root login. Nope. Max authorize, you know, you don't, you can use that if you want. Pub key authentication, yes. Password authentication, no. Challenge response, no. And that's about it. So you can actually change this around if you want. You could also make this a template if you want to look into uh, Ansible's file templating features. But I've just taken it as it is. And I said, I want this file up on my server. And so let's go back over here. I want this file up on my server and I want it to be uh, at sshd, at the ssh, sshd config. And of course you give it the owner, group, and the mode. And then once it's up there, we can restart sshd, enable it if it's not enabled, and then restart sshd to have that take uh, effect. All right, so now that you know how all the code works, let's run one last playbook, the vulture playbook again, but pass it delete so that you can see how to delete a playbook. So over here, I've got the Ansible demo server still here and uh, he's still there. So let's go ahead and delete him. So Ansible playbook vulture.yaml. And then we're gonna pass it extra vars. And we're gonna say vulture server name equals Ansible dash demo. And then we're gonna say delete equals true. And that's literally all there is to it. This is gonna take a second to delete, but once it comes back, we'll refresh this screen over here, and then I'll show you that it has been successfully deleted. All right, so it's come back, and let's just look at what it did. It uh, did not include the create tasks. It included the delete vulture server.yaml tasks. So it went and deleted the vulture server. So it says changed, so it changed something. And then it removed all instances of Ansible demo from the inventory file. And then you didn't have any debug. So let's look at the host file, make sure it did actually remove Ansible demo from the host file. So let's host and it's completely gone. So it was in Vulture and it was in Git. So it's gone from there. And now let's come over here and refresh our Vulture portal to see if it's actually deleted. All right, no active instances found when searching for Ansible demo. So you have successfully seen how to create a Vulture server. You've seen how to delete a Vulture server, and it's ready for you to do whatever else you wanted to do with it. Okay, I hope that wasn't too bad. 
It's not the only tool in my toolbox, but Ansible is one that I use a lot. Shell scripts can work to configure systems as well, but after a certain number of lines, I am always grabbing Ansible. It's a really great, powerful, easy to use tool. As you saw, you can create virtual machines on some cloud platforms. You can also use, to, use it to create virtual machines on your home hypervisor. And you can also configure many physical network devices and maybe your laptops and desktops and configure them all so that they're the same and so that they stay the same. If you wanna learn more about Ansible, I learned it from this Udemy course way back in the day. It's probably still relevant because Ansible hasn't changed too much over the years. I'll put that uh, in the description. Or you can check out Gearling Guy's stuff, AKA Jeff Gearling. He has a book and a video course. I haven't actually used his stuff, but I have seen and used a lot of his code over the years. He would be the guy I'd want to learn from if I was starting over today. I am not affiliated with any of these resources at all. These are just my personal suggestions to you because this was just a quick run through of a couple things uh, that Ansible can do. It's definitely not in depth and I don't even know if I'm the best Ansible teacher. So I really suggest you go check some of those out. So I've put all that Ansible code that you saw up on my Git server for you at git.paranoid.life. The link is also gonna be in the description. Speaking of, if you're interested in an automated setup of a Git server, just like that one for yourself, then subscribe and stay tuned for that. If you like this kind of technical stuff, that is the best way you can let me know. And remember, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they aren't out to get you. See you next time.